uh, interesting questions I was asked there at the break that you might find useful. Um, it, it was uh, it, it, it's just on, on objective testing. Each question has equal weighting when it comes to the number of marks you earn, right? So it, it doesn't matter if it's a question like number one, uh, which of the following is not or is short term? I can't remember what, was it not or is it is short term? And it took me 15 seconds to answer. That has equal weighting to a question where I have to get my, my erasable booklet out and, and use my tables and my calculator, and it might take me five minutes to answer. All right? And now, the, 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 there's a lot of rationale behind that and justification behind that uh, that essentially says one is not harder than the other. They both reflect learning that you have to undertake. And the example I was giving uh, just during the break is if, um, if, if we had somebody in the room here who in May had scored 95% in F1, right? So brilliant at paper F1 under the current syllabus. They would look at the question on IFRS this or IAS that, and it would be, I remember doing that. They would look at the question on short-term receivables and think, haven't got a clue, yeah? Whereas I looked at the one in short-term receivables because I've been teaching it for quite a few years, think, bang, I've got that. I can hardly spell IFRS, so I'm not going to do well on that. So one's easy for me, one's hard for me, one's easy for, for you, one's hard for you. So it just reflects the learning. And yes, some take longer, some take shorter, but they all have equal weighting when it comes up to, to scoring uh, the exam. All right? So again, it's another reason why you want to look through these and develop a technique that you can get the ones done that you are most comfortable with, and then take longer time to consider the, 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 the ones that you find more tricky. And each of us would have a different pattern that's in there. That's one issue that was, that was talked about. Um, another issue was how many questions are in there is, is 60, and where do the, the questions come from? In the syllabus, um, and I've got my syllabus document here. If you don't have one, I apologize. We don't have to hand out, but um, you can download this if you don't have a hard copy. But the syllabus has got a little table sitting there, which is um, the weightings of the syllabus topics. I'm looking up a P3 open here. It says there are five topics, A, B, C, D, and there's 20% weighting on each of them. What that means, that it's, 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 a, it's a study weighting, we call it, but it feeds through to the exam. 20% of the exam will be topic A, 20% will be B, so there will be 12 questions on each topic that's in here. And remember what I was saying with my 50% equals 70% and vice versa, every component learning outcome will be examined. So here's syllabus topic A, there's going to be 12 questions from syllabus topic A. There's one, two, three, four, five, six component learning outcomes, right? So you've got a lead learning outcome, component learning outcome, and then indicative syllabus content. What you're looking at is component learning outcome. If there's six of those and there's going to be 12 questions, then there are going to be two questions on each component learning outcome, okay? now. That's, the, that's the, the skeleton of, of the exam. We might find that there's a little bit of overlap between one learning outcome and another learning outcome. So you might be able to audit that practice exam and say, ah, he told us a lie. Because there's 13 that I can find, find from lead uh, A, and, and there's only 11 from lead B. So he lied, that Scotsman. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but it's that is the that's the the, the construction. I talked about the uh, the exam being rigorous and being fair and representing your learning and covering uh, all learning outcomes. That's what we have worked to do. All right, and each exam, the the the, the actual manufacture of the exam 
there's not random selection of questions from a big old bank of, of 300 or 500 questions or something. Um, there, there's carefully constructed exams that, that make sure that we've got balance between the, the learning outcomes, we've got balance between the question types. Yeah? We, we don't want there to be an exam which randomly selects 60 questions that all have the style of which of the following six statements is true? Yeah, and you, you, you know, that, and I've been saying to people, that's the toughest type of objective test question that we've got. Because you don't know whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And if, let's say, there are four, you identify three and you think, that's it, I've got the, I've got the true statement. So you click your three things, you press next, it doesn't tell you it's incomplete, yeah? It lets you submit three things. It would let you submit five things. It would let you su submit an answer with all six statements ticked, yeah? So it's a really, really tough question. And we don't want to have 60 questions like that coming up, yeah? Because that's unfair. So we've got such a, a delicate, careful balance of items in there that for every one of those questions that you get, uh, operational, you'll see four or five that are multiple choice or hotspot or drop down or something else. Yeah, at strategic level, it won't be that kind of ratio. Yeah, but that's because at strategic level, a lot of these verbs on the component learning outcome are recommend, evaluate, advise, which is where you have to use good judgment and really know your stuff to be able to make that type of, uh, of recommendation. Okay, so those are broadly the questions and I was, I was asked at break time and, and you know, very, very good questions and, and useful to, to one and all. Um, what I want to spend the rest of our time together doing um, is to have a look at the case study that comes through. Okay. Um, now, the case study works. Again, the, the, I've gone through the, the, again, the practice exams and so on and landed on the management level case study. We've got the narrative that's in there. Uh, by the case study practice exams, the exam tutorial is the same one that we've got for the objective testing. So once you've downloaded that one, you look at it, and it is just showing the screens, all the, the features of all the screens that we've got. Practice exam I've opened, so we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. Supporting resources, marking guidance with a, a model answer in there um, that you can look at. Okay. Now, what happens with the case study is that seven weeks before the exam window, so seven weeks, this is management level, so this is week three of May, August, November, February. Count back seven weeks from that, so what, first week of January, first full week of January, on the Monday, you would, be, you would have access to all this stuff, all right? And this stuff has got a pre-seen, what we call, well, it's all pre-seen, but it's got a, the introductory overview, which that's it there for this management case study. And it starts <coughs> it start telling you about the fictitious company that you got to role play that you are working in, okay? So, uh, low cost airlines, Western, Southern Europe, stuff about the business model, um, regional airports, uh, we don't provide in-flight snacks and refreshments, right, so just general stuff about a business that, you know, you might be familiar with how the, the low-cost airline model works, you might not, but we're all able to get to the same speed on this, yeah, um, stuff about the markets, and your job, you're a senior management accountant, main role is to provide information to the finance director to enable the company's performance to be measured and for decision making purposes. So that kind of goes back to, um, in my slides, where was I? 
yeah? It's, it's that story that's in there, the persona. So that starts, that's just general industry and particularly company information. The other things, again, I popped these out earlier, um, reference material. Now this is just more background information that helps you understand. In this case, Flyjet as a company. Here's costing information. All right. Uh, yeah. So how our price stacks up against the national carrier? I think that is. Yeah. Costs have been analysed. Fuel data. So we've got some information about how we compare um, cost-wise and what's included in the costs. Now there's nothing in here that you have to learn uh, before the exam. You don't have to learn. Know that it's in there, but I'm not going to be testing you about whatever this 80%, 86% sorry, number is. I'm not going to say um, what's the, what is the utilization rate in, in Flyjet, because that's not testing you as a, as a manager of the business making decisions. That's testing memory, right? And we're not doing that. Um, and likewise, I'm not going to be testing you at management level, I'm not going to be testing you by making you prepare a set of financial statements because you've been tested on that in the, in the uh, objective testing. Yeah, you saw, well we saw it at F1, here's a trial balance. Where do things go from a trial balance to a set of financial statements? Yeah, to get those right, you have to be able to do financial statements. Yeah. So I'm not going to test that again. So I'm just aware that there's stuff in here about our uh, not occupancy, uh, utilization rate. There's stuff in here, we want to get at least 90%. So you know, what I want to do is attract more passengers to make things more efficient. So I start to understand where this company is going, right? I won't learn this off by heart, I'll just appreciate it. There's more stuff. Flyjet fleet, so here's my assets, uh, operates at least 74, I've got one model of aircraft. Um, I mean that's interesting perhaps with some topics that there are within within the, the, the level. I'm, I've not got a range of different aircraft which mean that maybe the maintenance crew have to have a whole load of different tools and training and equipment and so on. Uh, operating costs, yeah, that's just one, one side of paper there. So there's not a huge, huge volume. Stock market information, oh look, uh, our stock price has been underperforming compared to the national carrier. That's all that's in there. That's it, so, right. So if I'm considering shareholders, I probably want to you know, look at, at things that will improve the, the share value. Here's the board of directors. Again, I'm not. I'm not going to sit and learn who they are and, and so on. I, I've got as many non-executive directors as I've got executive directors. Yeah, quick read through on that. It might have said something about how long they've been there, if any of them considering retirement or whatever. Flyjet risks, this is stuff that we would have done with an exercise in, in the E2 paper to look at what the risks are and the mitigation. Yeah, so that's done for us. Uh, that's some of, that's not all of them. But there's, yeah, so, so, so you've got a handful of bits of background information most of those were about the company that I opened, but some refer to the major competitor uh, and the market. Okay, so say so you've got seven weeks as a student to familiarize yourself with that and just start to imagine you know, what it's like working in that company, what sort of issues are there. You know, you, we don't expect students to go off and start Googling for, for low-cost airline and learn everything that there is to learn about every single uh, low-cost airline. Yeah? If you do, it won't harm you, but we, we're, we're saying that the, the scope of the case study exam will fall within what's being presented to you there. 
all right? So you spend, um, you spend your seven weeks looking at that, getting familiar with that, and, and, and you know, practicing the type of exercise that, that we'll be asking you to do in the exam. Now I've opened the exam, I hope it's still there. I've jumped through a couple of, uh, just the, the early screens, there's nothing all of great importance that I've jumped through that, that you need to see. Um, now, first thing that you see, pre-seen material. Now the practice exam doesn't, uh, doesn't have everything in there, but if I, when we get to the real exam, I'll be able to pop on that, that tab and I'll be able to find this and this and this and this and this, oops, I've just closed it, and this, and all of the things that were there in the pre-C. And they'll be within uh, a searchable database. So if, if, if I'm answering or uh, responding to a task that's been set and think, do you know what, I, I, I need to check up on, on uh, the, the risks. I'll be able to, to open that box and there'll be a search thing, I'll write risks search. And it'll find all the documents that have got risks in it, yeah? which may be more than the one. If I want share price, if I want fuel cost, if I, yeah, if I want aircraft, if I want a non-executive director, right? So I'll be able to, to find that. Although what we hope is that you won't be needing to use that search function because with seven weeks to go, you know there are, well, there were nine documents in there. It's not going to be more, well, it may be 10 documents. It's not going to be when we get to a live exam that you've got 37 documents to go through. Yeah, so there's a, a, a limited number of documents, fewer operational, slightly more in strategic, right? But not, not you know, like a, a book full of them. So, so you've got, you've always got this as a reference point. We don't envisage anyone having to spend, you know, like twenty minutes during the exam reading this because they've seen it. You might just want to glance into it again and say, "Hang on, what was that occupancy? I knew there was stuff about occupancy rate." What was the occupancy, or occupancy rate, the utilization rate? Yeah, you might just want to remember what word they use. It's not occupancy rate, because you use that for hotel. So you just want a reminder, all right? I know it's 86%, but I can't remember what the word is. So where was that again? Yeah, search for 86%. Oh yes, it's utilization rate, yeah? So, so that's really all that we expect that to, to be there for. The other thing that's on this um, pre-C, this, this was a screen that I went past while you were having your, your tea break. Um, before you start the exam, it's telling you that this exam constitutes four sections, uh, 45 minutes, 45, 60 minutes. So that's the breakdown of the work. So it gives you an indication of, of what's coming up, right? Um, and it says here you know, that that 45 minutes is for everything. It's for reading. It's for planning. It's for answering. Yeah. So we don't have like the the, the current paper based exams a uh, 20 minute uh, reading window. Now, in the exam, what happens? There's there's really two things that's going to happen, and and. This is simulating being at the office, being that persona, reporting to the finance director, and so on, all the stuff you've learned about. And um, it's going to simulate, in this case, a news article, but we'll have something that, that unofficially we're calling a trigger. I say unofficially, and then lots of people in SEMA call it a trigger, but apparently there's another phrase that, that gets used and, and it doesn't make as much sense as trigger. So something happens, there's something that has moved the story on from what we had in the pre c There's an event, there's an, a, a happening, something or other that says, oh hang on, we're going to have to do some thinking, some management accounting thinking. All right, now in this case, we've turned up at work, and somebody at the coffee machine or whatever has said, have you seen this in the news? The news is 
that um, jet fuel prices are soaring and that's going to have an impact on airfares. And, and we know from our pre-reading that our profit margin is very sensitive to, uh, to the, the price of fuel. It's a significant portion of our costs. And because we're low price, then that's the impact. So we, yeah, we should know that's, that's uh, an, an alarming situation for us, right? So all this is, and, and when you look through the various uh, uh, case studies, practice case studies, You'll see all sorts of differences. Sometimes it is a news article. Sometimes it looks like a web page that you clicked on. Sometimes you've got um, your boss or a colleague comes into your desk or comes up to your desk and says, "Oh, here's some minutes from a meeting that, that took place yesterday, and I think we should worry about this." Or you know, so something has happened in a business context that says, "Right, let's get our management accounting boots on and see if we can make things better." Okay. So that is a one-pager in there. That's the trigger. I click next. So I don't do anything about that other than read it. I click next. You know, so I started this a while back so that I'm about 14 minutes to go. I'm not going to pass this. <laughs> right. Um, I, I do want to get to the, the clock that stops it. Right, I click next, and then there's what? So we've got trigger, and that triggers a task. <coughs> this is the task. The finance director, the person who it said we report to, sent an email asking to be part of a working party from Michael Gibbons. I would like you to join a working party that has been established to consider potential ways of reducing costs and increasing revenues. Oh, brilliant. And that, when the fuel prices are going up, that's a task and a half. I'm concerned that the scenario in which the price of aviation fuel is inflated may continue into the long term. I would like us to suggest ways in which improved accounting might help the company to manage this problem. All right, so specifying the accounting rather than looking for suggestions on how to save costs, you know, like, I don't know, have, <laughs> don't clean the aircraft as often. <laughs> lock the toilet doors so you don't have to clean them. All right. Uh, before the first meeting, I would like you... Now, this is where we depart from the current type of exam. In the exams that we've got just now, you, you read through stuff and there's a box, dotted line box, it says requirements. And then the requirement says explain in bold letters or calculate or... Uh, uh, analyze or evaluate and all the verbs that we say you've got to understand what those verbs mean those are not compulsory for the, the case study writers those verbs so I would like you to prepare as a is a verb but it doesn't say prepare a report that covers two issues firstly include a strategic analysis of the implications so We've got to think now, what's strategic analysis? That's something out of uh, E2, I think. Yeah? So the extent of the, the analysis, the extent, the extent of the work here is not the same as answering an objective test question. An objective test question might say, what should a strategic analysis contain? Or what functions are performed in preparing a strategic analysis? You know, what's the priority of it? The running order? Could be all sorts of questions that, that are about how does it get prepared. This is do one. Look at the look at the precinct, look at the analysis we've got. Yeah? What what happens with prolonged increases in fuel prices? Secondly, an evaluation of the ways. So again, evaluation is one of our verbs that we've got just now. It's saying what are the good points, what are the bad points, is it a good thing to do? of the ways in which the adoption of activity-based management, that's a P2 topic, and target costing, which is also a P2 topic, could be used to help us identify potential cost reduction opportunities. All right, that's not too bad, I think. But again, in, a, in an objective test, it might say, you might have a question that says, which are the advantages of using activity-based management? Right, so activity-based costing. It might have an exercise that says, here's some costs, 
here's some cost pools, here's some drivers calculating the activity base cost per unit of product X. Right? Objective test, very, very focused on this. All right? Likewise, target costing. You might have something or objective test that says calculate a target cost. It might have put the following steps in the right order. How do we establish a target cost? Uh, it could have, you know, the, what, bet, what point in the life cycle is a target costing exercise going to be carried out? There's all sorts of th things that can be in, in, in object testing. But this is for this business the task that you have to perform. All right? For us, in, in our airline, how might target costing uh, be a benefit, devaluate it? Yeah? What are the benefits that it would bring to us? How much work would be involved in doing it? What are the disadvantages of doing it in the context of Flyjet, our, our, our company? Okay. Um, now, again, you, you be a huge benefit as you come up to case studies to look at the way in which these tasks are set and to go through the practice test to see this. Because sometimes it's it's got the bullet points, that's quite clear what we're doing. Sometimes it's more hidden within a, a, a conversation. Uh, so it could be that Michael has come to my office uh, and he's and there's quote marks saying, Michael said, da 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 da, oh, I really need this to be done. I need it to be done in 15 minutes or it's like 45 minutes for this one. Yeah? So the way that the task is set is, is less formal than our current exam. And it's, it's in a business context. So you know you, you might not have quite as clear instruction uh, as, as we're used to seeing. All right, so it'd be very, very useful to go through, not just, if you're doing management level, look at this one. We're gonna have a second thing coming out soon. Um, and look at the strategic ones, look at the operational ones, yeah? The pattern that we've got with them though is that Operational will be much more directions, uh, directional. It will say many, many of the, the tasks will be set with bullet points. I want you to do this, then this, then this, then this, because that's how you operate at the operational level. Strategic is going to be almost like, oh, what do you think about this? Yeah, that's, could go anywhere. Yeah, so much wider. Now, so we've got a task in here. We've got evidence. Now I can click back. So we've got evidence about the prices. Okay, I don't know how much is in there, but prices are going up, that's fine. And I've still got my pre-seen, all nine uh, sheets of pre-seen available, if there's anything that I want to go back and look at. Now, I, I probably want to look at, at the proportion of my total costs that are fuel prices, the impact of them going up by 5% on my profit margins, and things like that. So I'll click through and maybe just do a few bits of calculation. I can, I'll have my um, scratch pad that I can pop out here and I can type on it and say profit margin X percent, increase fuel 5%, profit margin fall less. Or I can use my uh, erasable booklet to, to do that sort of stuff, make some notes, do a plan, and so on. Now, if I click on again, I get to the answer screen. Seven minutes left. All right? And on the answer screen, I've still got the pre scene I've got the reference materials, which is now the task and the trigger. So everything comes with me while I'm doing task number one. Okay, and what I've got, prepare a report as detailed in the finance director's email. What I've got is the very most basic word processing package, give or take, you can imagine. Yeah, there is nothing to do with formatting of tables, of bullet points, of coloring texts, of using different uh, fonts. Um, the the, re, re, the all, all, all that's expected is that you are going to be typing. Yeah, you're going to be typing this this report. Can't remember who it was to. Mike L. From me. 
right? Uh, subject, fuel prices increasing and stuff. That's the nice bit of fuel. Um, <laughs> see, now, why have we kept, we, we've, we've deliberately kept the um, functionality to a minimum. The reason being that we do not want people who have tons of experience working in Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint to have an advantage over other people who haven't had that experience. Right? We want to assess how good you are at management accounting, not how good you are at making a report look pretty. All right, I think that's fair. The other thing, oh, I, I did this on purpose. That's why I opened it in the tea break. It is going to tell me to get a move on, right? Now, hopefully not at the point where I've just written the heading of the report, but uh, <laughs> we'll pretend that I've written an awful lot more. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind is that this is not becoming a test of how quickly you can type, all right? Those of you that, that were here when um, Stephen, can't remember his surname, talked about business writing in, in, in English, uh, one of the things that came out, in, and this is, this is a guy who's worked in KL, he's a Canadian guy, he's worked in KL for 12 years, I think, and he, and he knows how people communicate in business and, and how uh, when you're trying to write in English, you tend to put a few more words in than is absolutely necessary um, to make the point. And it's, it, it's not just uh, KL, it's not just Malaysia that that happens. We get everyone doing it, yeah? Um, if I'm the finance director, I don't want to be spending 45 minutes reading this report. I want to see the key points, yeah? I want things to be concise and straight to the point. And it's, it's something that, that we need you, need you to try and practice. If, if you look at the answers to these, these uh, tests, model answers, now these are the ones that go way, way beyond what we'd expect the student to do to pass. Um, it doesn't take 45 minutes to type those answers. There's careful consideration goes into it. So, so we don't want people who are going to be like, <laughs> for 45 minutes. Dizzy. Um, we, 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 we want this to have, have a, a big impact. Yeah? Saying so this, uh, it, just, to, just to remind you, uh, this considers two things, right? And a kind of strategic analysis. I think I typed that correctly. Uh, what was the other? Oh yeah, so it's actually three things. ABM and target costing. Was it target costing? It was, yeah. Paid attention. Um, I can go back and do that. Yeah? And, and you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be focused, it's going to be, be really uh, key to the point that I just get through and make, make my issue without elaborating too much. And, and you know, you notice the most that I'm going to do is yeah, put headlines in bold or underline them. Yeah, um, the strategy. That's it. There you go. There's proper typing. Is right, so I can't. I can't even set this to, you know, to to bullet points or anything. Yeah, uh, and you know, it, it, what, what else can I do? I, I can, I can type. I, I can do that. I can spend twenty minutes putting ideas down. I think it's a great way to do it. Actually, it's just to say the the thing that when I'm writing a, a paper based exam, or when I have done, the bit that I hate is. That I'll get things, I've done my thinking process and I start writing. And when I've done about 15 minutes of writing, suddenly I have a flash of inspiration of something that should really be near the top of the answer. 
been there, we've done that, haven't we? What do we do here? We go, let's just cut that from there and put that there. Brilliant. I can do that paragraph by paragraph. So at that point, when the five minute warning came up, I would have obviously hoped I've had a lot of stuff written in here. And now for the last five minutes, I'm going through, I'm cutting, I'm pasting, I'm putting things in bold for paragraph headings, um, maybe underlining the, the, the very key points. And I think, yeah, just to, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the cosmetic things that say this is making it look like a better communication because that's part of the people skills. Because I'm trying to convince Michael Gibbons here, I'm trying to convince him that he needs to adopt activity-based management, if that's what I think the case is. I'm trying to tell him target costing is not uh, a good exercise. Like, yeah, I've run out of time. Yeah, so so that's that's the people skills that are being tested in here. It's my persuasion, it's the communication, it's talking at the right level. I'm not going to go to Michael Gibbons, a finance director, and explain to him the nitty gritty detail of activity-based costing and start giving an example of that because he's assumed he's a CFO or an FT, I assume he's done some accounting somewhere along the line. So, you know, it's, it's not that he asked me for the advantages and disadvantages. So I'm just making sure that I communicate all of that at the right level to the right guy. Is that okay? And, and um, one point about that answer screen, um, you know, and, and, and not being able to do tables and bullet points and top we're not going to be asked to do uh, a trial balance or a forecast cash flow that needs January, February, March, April, and, and so we're not going to be asked to do that. Okay? The most we'll do on calculations is something that we choose to do. Right? So I might choose to say what proportion of my total costs are made up of fuel costs because I think that might contribute to that strategic analysis. Yeah, I might look at profit margins. I might build that required utilization of 90% somehow into my discussion of target costing. But you saw there was no indication I had to do that. I'm only going to do it if I think it adds to the explanation that I'm doing. And if I do that, then that's my business skills. I, among many other things, it's my business skills be, be, being shown off. Because I'm saying that I can talk about I can talk about target costing all you want. I've got to talk about target costing for Flyjet, and if I can illustrate it with not only the the facts that come from the, the pre-scene, but also a few of the figures, then really that's really going to make a solid answer. But it's, it's my judgment as to whether I include it or not. Okay, now a very, very quick point. This cut me off because time went to zero. If I was doing the objective test, it cuts me off when time goes to zero. All right? It doesn't mean anything's lost. This has saved everything that I wrote. Somebody back at Pearson View can now open this if they wanted to, and see what Her Majesty the Queen has written about activity-based man management and target costing, and they will probably get as good an answer as if Her Majesty the Queen herself had done this. Um, it, it, it is a point, it's just to, to kind of reassure, your work is saved and backed up so instantly, I can't remember how many nanoseconds or whatever they talk about. You know, so, so if you were unlucky enough to be in an exam centre where the clumsiest man in the world walks along and trips over the power cables and pulls everything out of your of your PC, um, you know the, the the server has got your performance, and Pearson View would be able to click back in, and it would say, you know, you have got uh, 37 minutes 24 seconds remaining you have got 17 unanswered questions and all the rest of that. So 
you know, that, that, that's all safe. So obviously that, that we knew that was coming, that's happening. I click OK to continue. And then the case study moves me on. OK, I pressed OK. It moves me on. Um, and there is now a new trigger. And this is how it happens here. The, 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 the fresh trigger moves me forward in time. It actually says it here one week later, right? So I've submitted my report about strategic analysis and activity-based management and about target costing. Uh, it says, the working party's initial findings included the introduction of a TQM program. Now, in the first step, I might have linked, when I was talking about target costing, something I like doing, is saying target costing looks at um, designing out costs and doing total quality management. I might have put that in. I thought, brilliant, that's a really good uh, integration of topics within the, the syllabus. I might not have. I might open this and think, oh, do you know what, I wish I'd put that in. I wish I'd said that's an advantage of target costing. I can't press back. I can't go and change it. I can't change my answer. Because it's one week later. Yeah? So it'd be like, you know, you go back to your boss after weeks and say, do you know that report I wrote? Just, can I see it for a moment? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's exactly as I left it, you know. Give me an extra mark. You can't do that. All right? We've moved on. And, and, and it, it, it won't assume anything. It, it, it will not say here, you should have said this about target cost and you should have said that, all right? It won't say, in, in your report, it's not gonna suddenly create a paragraph that says, in your report, you said we should do this, so we did this, right? It's going to, it's going to act like this and say, went to the working party, your suggestions were considered, so were his, hers, his, hers. We've got lots of suggestions and this is what we came up with, all right? So it doesn't, you know, depend, doesn't adapt, depending on what happened in your answer uh, to the first task. But something else comes in, there's a, a different set of tasks, so this is a trigger, there's a different task, when I press next, I've got 33 minutes remaining, and uh, prepare a report that demonstrates Clearly, the change management issues, that's an E2 topic, uh, associated with introducing TQM to Flyjet. I'm concerned that the move towards full service model will do very little to improve our revenues. I need you to evaluate the marketing implications. That's another E2 thing. All right? So, so there's, there's chats in there. And again, if I go back to this, I can see the pre c so I can find out about the competitor that's a full service business, find out an analysis of the industry. And the reference materials now are only the ones for task number two. So the stuff that we had about the fuel prices and the, the email about activity-based management, etc., gone. Alright? We're on a new week, we've got a new set of tasks, and we go through and then come to yet another answer screen. All right, and so it goes. This one has got four sections, four tasks. Okay, different numbers. Obviously, a big one coming up at the end. Okay, but the way that they are asked, they're sort of forcing you to think. Like the one about change management. Yeah. That's got a lot of people issues in there. So we're, 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 we've, you know, we've got the technical stuff here. Knowing what TQM is, knowing the implications of it for the business. Technical skills, business skills. All right, change management, people skills, business skills and people skills. Leadership comes into change management as well. All right, so the question is kind of guiding you through the competencies and it's using the, the syllabus learning outcomes as a guide. As I said, we change management, that's E2. TQM is P2. 
I think the, the F stuff doesn't come up until task number four in this, in this case study. All right? Now, what we're going to do, the, 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 I think it's the end of October, you'll be able to find, well, those, those case studies are live just now, in the practice exams are, are live just now. And I think come the end of October, what's going to happen is there will be a second uh, set of tasks for each one of these case, uh, case studies, each one of the pre -seeds. So you'll get to see how um, the exams can change. So how within one case study window, I said we're going to have five different uh, sets of tasks. We're calling them variants. So there'll be a second variant out. So there'll be something to do with Flyjet that comes out. And maybe, uh, yeah, I've got no idea, I've not seen what's happening with the second variant. But the first task might have nothing to do with fuel prices at all probably won't. Yeah? It will probably start with some other type of decision. We've identified a different model of aircraft that we think is, is worth investing in. Yeah, because we've only got one just now. Here's the cash flow forecasts associated with buying, maintaining that model of aircraft. Yeah? Discuss the investment appraisal. Discuss the strategic um, issues, discuss the, the, the learning curve, people management issues around it. It could be something like that. And then it might take you off and say, if you're going to acquire these aircraft, what source of finance are you going to? So the second task might be about financing. And then about, I don't know. So it, it, you'll see that the same set of pre seen material, this set of nine items, those won't change, but there'll be a completely different scenario for a management level person to take, all right? And likewise, ops and, and uh, strategic, okay? So we will be notifying people when those are available. We're just gonna sneak them on there and, and say, hope you find them. <laughs> um, we'll be doing that, and as I say, again, if, if, when, when it comes to, to preparing for the case studies, you know, the very least that you're going to do is try to work through these and see uh, see what you're being asked for, yeah? And, and review the answers. And there's a, another piece of work that's being commissioned that also should be at the end of uh, October, which is going to have much, much more marking guidance on it. This one just has a grid of numbers. It's completely uh, uninformative for, for somebody who needs to learn what needs to be done in a case study. Uh, but we're going to get something that says, if you look at this answer, oh, sorry, if you look at this task, the thinking behind this task was, I wanted to test people's uh, business skills and leadership skills. And I've done it by making them think about these topics from these learning outcomes. Now, in the answer, here's the answer, and beside it, there'll be a narrative that says, this paragraph has been put in to set the scene. It's a format of a report, it's essential that we communicate well. This would earn you up one mark on people's skills, yeah? This paragraph describes what activity-based management is about to make sure that any reader is able to understand the context of the advantages and disadvantages. That's a technical skill that is worth, worth one mark. This paragraph talks about